Hey what's going on and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be doing another review and this time it is for episode 11 which is the boat trip and this this is another one of my favourite episodes and the reason why I created this is because a lot of what happened like so far in the series is focused around the apartment like you had a couple of scenes like with the yoga studio and the football match and everything where they got at but a lot of it is focused inside the apartment so i wanted to do something where the majority of it was outside and this this is the idea that i had for it and the boat trip it's it's being in a confined space like with just the two of them that i thought would work really well and it also gave me a chance to use some of the water features and everything that come with iclone because i hadn't used them up until this point so it gave me a it gave me a reason to do that but before we get into it there is one thing that i already noticed here i'm not sure if you have if you look at mr daz's fingernails they're transparent so you can see through his fingernails straight through to the green writing on the t-shirt and like this this never actually got spotted like no one's commented on this to say that they've seen it or whatever this is just something that like i noticed watching back and it's been fixed now. I don't think you actually see it in any other episodes, but it was only doing this scene that I noticed it close up after it had been rendered and gone live. So if if you do use iClone, be careful because this, this can happen quite a bit. I'm not sure why it does because I never changed anything for his fingernails and everything. It was just the, the strength of the glow at times on his fingernails that got changed but for some reason it made it transparent but anyway thank you all for watching don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get straight into the episode morning mr des did you have any plans for the weekend nick it's tuesday why would i have plans for the weekend so early so that's one thing like mr des was just drinking that tea and like he, he put the cup to there but nothing moved like his lips never moved the cup usually would go up there so he's drinking so like that's something now that like if you're if you're sitting there watching if you're watching it on your phone you're not really going to take that that much notice but if you're watching it on a bigger screen or on tv you, you'll then take notice of things like that and like i'm now watching it on a bigger monitor and i've just taken notice of that so like that is one thing that now i will try and like keep an eye on i don't really do that many scenes where they're drinking or anything but like if i was to do them then it would be the case that that is what i would look out for hey Blandon, was wondering if you wanted to join me uh let me think mm, no why not Let's see, we work together for nine hours a day, Monday to Friday, and we live together, so I'll say enough of you as it is. Okay, that makes sense. I'll just have to tell my dad that I'll borrow his boat another weekend. Wait, what? Boat? Yeah, my dad bought a boat last year and said that once I've done my training, I can take it out alone. I completed the training last week, so I'm ready to take it out for a spin. Just didn't want to go alone. Oh, well, I wouldn't want you to have to change your plans. I suppose I can move a few things around and join you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. You're a good friend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Weekend away at sea. I can't wait. Gonna get a load of beer and probably go and buy a fishing rod. Oh, this is gonna be fun. There's been quite a few things that Nick has asked me to do with him and I usually refuse, but how can I say no to this one? Just as long as he knows that I'm gonna be captain. I don't care if he's driving the thing. So, <laughs> that that's the part of Mr. Desi's personality that I like. That like, He turned around and said, like, no, I'm not spending the weekend with you. I live with you, I work with you. I don't really wanna be spending any more time with you and that's where mr dad's like he would prefer to spend a weekend watching football or whatever but yeah that i've always said that like mr dad's reminds me a lot of my own dad but this part is me that if someone turned around to me like if i lived with someone and i worked with someone and then come the weekend they're like oh do you want to do this do you want to do that i'd probably be the same that like i've spent far too much time with you I'll just leave me alone in peace and like let me see other people and things like that but they turn around and say like oh i'm going out on a boat <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, a boat. So that, that that's more my personality towards things. Are you sure you have everything for the weekend? Yep. Got a load of beers and a fully charged iPad to watch the football. No more needed. 
Okay, cool. I'm really excited to get out on the water. It's going to be so relaxing. Yeah, let's hope so. So what kind of boat does your dad have? I haven't seen it yet. He did say that it was luxurious though and that it's been getting him a lot of female attention. Oh, I bet your mum loves that. No, not really. Do a left up here and follow it straight to the bottom. Cool. I'm looking forward to this weekend away. Things have seemed a little bit strange lately with me and Mr Daz. I think him asking me to move back in has really hurt his pride a bit. I don't really want to mention anything around him, but it seems obvious. I arranged this weekend to get everything back on track and I'll do everything I can to make sure he enjoys every second of it. I might even drink a beer with him, although I am more of a fine wine kind of guy. I love doing the forest scenes that... It's not because like there's not much that goes into it. It's just a case that like I like the effects that... like. If if this was a scene that was at the apartment, then you'd have Nick talking and moving and things like that, but you wouldn't have nothing else around. But with the forest scenes, you can actually do it like the leaves are blowing and things like that. That like, I, I think it just it all comes together so much better than actual static scenes. Like if you're in the apartment or like even down to like being in a car and that. So yeah, I've done uh for like with the forest scenes. My first one was a halloween style one and i really really enjoyed doing that and like at the time the computer that i was using wasn't that powerful so it took a lot longer to do and i, I remember it crashed quite a lot while doing it but i think this is something that I, i'd want to implement more that they're out in the woods a lot more they're camping a lot more and things like that because i do like doing the forest scenes okay Nick. so <coughs> which one's ours <coughs> oh is it that yacht over there Oh, is it that one? Ah, oh, that looks like one I could roll around in install. Nope, it's neither of them. It's this one. What's this crap? <laughs> this is our boat for the weekend. This is a motorboat. It's not designed for weekends away. I know, but the weather's supposed to be lovely this weekend. There's a sheltered sofa in there, so it should be fine. I've got a lot of different motions that I've accumulated up that some that I've purchased, some that I've done myself with the mocap camera and like the Kinect camera and some that have been given away through like videos on YouTube and things like that. Some of them give motions away. So I've got quite a big library of motions, but one motion that at the time of doing this episode I did not have was having a character turn around and if if you'd have just noticed that, like, I'll go back a little bit. If you watch Nick as he turns, so I don't want to go back too far. So let's say to twenty to twenty. If you watch Nick as he turns it's around, here, weekends away. <laughs> I know, he's not moving. It, this weekend. There's a shit with sofa in there. It's like he's in, in in a shop front and he's standing like on the plate that spins on its own. And I tried to do. I tried to use the. Um, the motion puppet so like to get him to walk and then just turn it itself but at the time of doing this like I, I never really knew too much with like the transformer side and things so like as I would do it like and I'd turn him it'd be turned throughout the whole scene and things like that so it was quite confusing at the time so this is what I came up with I'm just I'm just gonna have him turn there <laughs> and it it looks weird because he's not even looking at Mr Daz as he turns it, <laughs> it does look very strange but Obviously, that's not something that you'd see in an episode now. But, yeah, this is something that... I don't know if too many people have spotted it if they've watched this, but I found it quite funny how he turns like that. Bloody hell. This is not what I was expecting. We should just go home. No, please. Let's just give it a go for a few hours, and if you don't like it, we'll come back to shore and go home. Fine. Look at this bloody thing. I can't believe that I'm going to die at sea with Nick. I always imagined that when I die, I'd go out in a blaze of glory. I always wanted to be a I kind of messed up a bit with a camera there. Gang down that would lead to a standoff. They would circle me, and I'd just start firing at all of them. The bullets would be spraying around everywhere, and I'd be fatally shot. Back up would arrive, and the rest of the members of the gang were left standing. But I wouldn't make it. I would die a hero. I'd go down in all the history books. Now it just looks like I'm going to drown and be eaten alive by a fish. <laughs> they might give me a little section of the newspaper for my 15 minutes of fame, but that'd be it. As you can probably tell, I'm just stalling. The longer I stand here and talk to you, the less I have to spend on this heap of junk. <laughs> See, Mr. Daz, this is the life. Nothing can run for moles. The sun is shining, the beers are flowing. Could you think of a better way of spending your weekend? Well, I can think of a few things. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, let's see. There's football, pub, in bed, on a date, boot sale. Really? You think going to a boot sale is better than spending a weekend at sea? 
well, uh, boat sails on solid ground and I'm only there for a couple of hours before I'm back home with my feet up. The, the, there's a couple of things like over the last like few seconds of that, that I noticed that like one is that with Nick his hand was going through his leg a bit and the other thing that if I was remaking this episode now the the one thing that I would do would be with Mr. Daz when he turned around and said that like there's a few things that I could think of and then he put his hand up to name them so he was like in bed down the pub football boot sale that's what you'd do like if you was like listing things you would do that with your fingers and with mr daz he, he done it he put one thing he put one finger up and then it went up to like five fingers so that is something now that i pay a lot more attention to and like i think even down to now like with the latest episodes i think the actual like with the actual movements of each character um, things like that I do pay a lot more attention to and like you'll see some parts in like this episode the previous episode where like Mr. Daz or Nick will lift their arm but rather than it being a, a fluent motion it will just be the case that it's like that and it's too quick and you notice that with a lot of drawn animations that like if you sit and watch Family Guy that it will be the case that because it's a drawn animation it, it's more understandable so like for example in family guy if peter's talking he'll be talking but his expression like he'll do that and he'll stay like that for like maybe like five or ten seconds and then it'll move on to the next one and it'll stay like that for five or ten seconds and it makes a lot of sense with drawn animation but when it comes to 3d animation it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to actually add more authenticated arm movements and head movements and things like that so like at the time i think when i first started animating i was taking a lot more advice from the animations that i'd seen which a majority of them were drawn so i was doing it the same that i was doing that movement leaving it there for 10 seconds and things like that and it, it doesn't fit as good with 3d than it does with drawn animation like so the, these are things that like through through creating the first series the first series of this show it was pretty much trial and error on what i what i needed to do and how things needed to be done and even down to learning the software and things like that and even down to now that i'm halfway through season two and there's still a lot that i need to pay attention to there's still a lot for me to learn and i'm not expecting to be to the point where every episode is perfect probably until i get like four or five seasons in and i know that i'm still constantly making them and things like that and even though i've added like started adding more to the channel now through like different youtube shorts and things like that i do like the tv commercial parodies and things like that they don't take that long to make i mean this last night and this morning i spent probably like an hour and a half two hours creating the shorts that are coming out that by the time this comes out they, they would have come out the last few days so you've got the the short with the um like weighing himself at the gym and then you've got the short where it's the self-defense with david and things like that they don't take me that long because i'm getting a lot more used to the actual movement of each character and how i want them to move and i've started to notice in the in the newer episodes there's certain things that mr daz does with movement that I, Im I implement in quite a lot because it's it's a normal thing that like there's things that I do that if I'm having a conversation with someone I'm talking to someone there's certain things that I may do with my head or my arms or my legs or whatever that is unique to me and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to do different things with the characters that make it unique to them and for me now nah, it is a lot quicker and I've saved a lot of motions from previous episodes that i've just touched up on and these motions actually help me quite a bit because i don't have to sit and like nitpick with every single bit because i know that i've already like gone through them motions with a fine tooth like with a fine comb so if if you are using iclone or any 3d software where you can save the motion that you've done i would highly recommend that like if you've got a character and they're doing something that is unique to them and it could be anything like for example if you're animating a character and you're creating your own baseball swing so you're using the motion layer to like bring the arm up and to take the swing 
rather than thinking like if I want to do this again like a few further episodes down or whatever and think like oh, I'm going to have to do that again just save the motion save that clip you may have to do it that uh, with that clip you'll then do a new project and open it and then recenter it so that when you add it to a character again they don't disappear off the screen but this is something that I've done a lot and it, it, it helps a hell of a lot for future episodes especially if you've got like if for example if you're doing a show about baseball then these are the sort of motions that when you create them you're going to want to keep them because you will reuse them again further down the line and it is something that i have done quite a bit now with the characters from this show because there are motions there that i wanted to keep on using further down the line once in a lifetime experience yes super how long left a day and a half really well, let's just find somewhere to go. Maybe we can find a nice pub in a village somewhere. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Uh-oh. What? Nothing. It's just that the boat won't stop. Well, that's not really nothing then, is it? We're miles away from any kind of land, and how the hell are we supposed to get back to shore? Don't worry. My dad told me this could happen. He explained how to fix it. Oh, okay. Cool. Wait a minute. Your dad told you that the boat could stop working, and you still brought me out on it. What is your problem? Well, he said it hasn't done it for a couple of weeks. I figured we'd be okay. Well, we're clearly not okay. Help! Help! Who are you shouting for? I thought that might be pretty obvious. Help can only mean a couple of things. Okay, no need for sarcasm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> can you believe this? This twat brings me out on a broken boat and now we're stuck in the middle of nowhere with no land or another boat in sight. How can someone be so stupid? I can hear you, Mr. Daz. Of course you can bloody hear me. We're stuck on this miniature-sized boat and I can't get no more than a few feet away from you. Your attitude stinks. This is the last time I bring you out on the boat. Oh no, I am so sorry. I take back everything I said to you. Please don't make me stay at home when I can be stuck in a boat with this big useless twat. <laughs> <coughs> so, I've, I've spoke about this before. What I wanted to do with the show is, um, when I first created it, I was into the Modern Family series. And what I really liked about that was the individual interview parts. And I have implemented that into the show since day one. And for this episode that you had the interview with Nick and Mr. Daz before they got on the boat. But I wanted to, it wasn't the initial idea that after they got stuck and stranded, that I got the idea in my head that, Right, so the way to do it is Mr. Daz needs to have an interview on this boat because for whatever he says, Nick is going to rear him regardless because the only way Nick would near him is if Mr. Daz was to throw him overboard. <laughs> but so I wanted to get the interview him because I thought that it would be a funny way that like for, for the way Nick reacts to what Mr. Daz is saying and then the way Mr. Daz responds to it. So yeah, the, that, that's where the idea of putting the interview in for this came in. Just one more thing though, that like I said, it is the case that I'll, I will write an episode and like I usually write an episode for around about eight minutes long. But what tends to happen is that as I'm creating it, I'll come up with different ideas that I want to put in. And it's rare, but there's sometimes things that I'll, I'll create a scene and I don't like it in the slightest. So I'll take it out and then I have to think of something else to replace it. But for this, I think this episode is like eight minutes long that... I already had it pretty well kitted out before I created it and it was only this scene that like, I got I got up to this scene and thought yeah this is what I need to add in so I quickly wrote it down went upstairs recorded it come down and done this scene but that's why this one is not as long because I already had it all panned out before I, I started creating it and yeah so oh I'm so bored Nick, what are we going to do? We haven't seen another boat for hours. Well, I'm trying to fix the ignition so we can get moving. You've been staring at that thing for hours. Why don't you just admit that you don't know what you're doing? As I said before with the scene that with Nick having the interview and you had the trees and everything and all the trees and that moving, this is such a basic scene that like, if, if you break down everything that's in this scene, take away like the two characters, but like the boat is just one prop. And then you've got the water, which is just one prop. And then you've got the the background, which is an image. And the moon in the background is just a PNG file. 
and I don't know it's just something about like as you watch this scene that you have to put the effect in obviously for the water so you've got the sound of that water in the background but as you're watching it that like you can see the water rippling and even down to like getting the the moonlight to like shine off of the water I don't know it's just something about these these scenes that are so satisfying to watch because like I said that like when you've got a static apartment you don't get nothing and I think that's where I need to do it like for example if if it's an interview with Nick at the apartment and he's got the window behind him I think I need to start putting more things there it could be anything like it could be birds flying across or whatever but just something there that it's a, it's a different movement other than just the character moving and things like that but yeah I, I do really like these scenes for that reason concentrate move out of the way let me take a look Mr Daz don't touch nothing it's very delicate <laughs> <laughs> right so for this that this is where like i've always said that mr dad reminds me of my own dad and this is what my dad would do that if something breaks if something needs fixing my dad has the mentality that he can fix it there's there's nothing that he can't fix but nine times out of ten that whatever he tries to fix he will make worse <laughs> and like it's just there's been times over the past that like his sisters have asked him that like can you come round and like fix my lights there's something wrong with my lights <laughs> and I remember it went round to my aunt's house one night to fix one of the lights in the bedroom and it kept flickering and like you'd switch it on and then it'd just go off and things like that and he, <laughs> he went round there and he had a look and he tried to fix it and the light wouldn't switch off so for, <laughs> for whatever he'd done that the, no matter how many times you push this light switch it would not flicker it would not do nothing and this light just stayed on and th that is something that, that happened probably like 15 years ago 20 years ago and it's still spoken about to this day and there was another time where <laughs> what was so funny about him is that if he goes he doesn't do nothing for free he, he's one of these people that like if you if you want him to do something you have to treat him whether it's giving him a tenner or buying him a packet of tobacco or things like that but he went round to my other aunts one day to fix her lights and i think it was like the um it's like the chandelier sort of lights and there was a couple of bulbs in it that, <laughs> that wouldn't work and he went round there and i was young at the time i was probably only like 10 years old at the time and i went round river went round there with him and so he he went in and he had a look at the lights and he was like yeah no 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 that's fine i can fix that anyway about half an hour later he'd blown every <laughs> he'd blown every single light in the house not a single light was working and he had no idea how to fix it and he still walked away with a video <laughs> and that's the thing that like with, with my dad that he he believes that he can fix anything and even if he fails he, he will still get what he wants out of it and that's why I put this part in with Mr. Daz because straight away he's like, let me have a look, let me fix it. And straight away he's just blown it and gone flying into the water. And that part is something that it really does remind me of something that my dad has done in the past and something that he would very likely do if he was stuck in this situation on a boat. Mr. Daz, can you hear me? Oh my God, he's going to drown out here. I can't believe that I've killed Mr. Daz. He told me that he didn't want to come here. Mr. Daz! What are you shouting at, you idiot? Oh, Mr. Dad, I'm so glad you're okay. I thought you was dead. Why, because I fell in a bit of water? I didn't even know you could swim. Yeah, you probably should have thought of that before you brought me onto this death trap. I need to get <laughs> the hell out of these wet clothes. I know we're stuck out here, but it's so relaxing. There's no traffic, no sirens, no drunks shouting their heads off. Well, except you. Yeah, I must admit, it is nice. Life is so hectic. We never take the time to just sit and look up at the stars. I'm just glad we had the right weather for being stranded. Yeah, that is very... <laughs> <laughs> Nick, if we survive this, then I promise you, when we get back on land, I'm going to kill you. It's just a bit of rain. We're under shelter. That's not the bloody point. Do you know what I had planned for this weekend? Let me guess, you was going to stay in your loungewear and sit and watch football all weekend. Oh, how did you know? Because that's all you ever do. You claim to be this amazing person with this amazing life, but the fact is you're boring. You don't like change, so you do the same thing week in, week out. 
all right, there's no need to be mean. Really? You think I'm being mean? This is usually a conversation that goes the other way. It's usually you telling me that I'm boring and that I need to get a life. Yeah, I know. You know what? I just think it would be better if we... What was that? I don't know. Nick, it's a bloody radio. Did you not know that there was one on the boat? How was I supposed to know that? Because you've done your bloody training, you idiot. Go and answer it and get us the hell out of here. You need to work on your attitude. Nick, radio, now. Fine. So the radio part was like the, the ideas. I have no idea how to fix a boat. If I was stuck in that situation and like the boat just stopped working, I would have no idea how to fix it. And I was thinking at the time that if neither of them know how to fix it and I don't know how to fix a boat, so I couldn't write it into the script. So they, they need a way out. They, they can't stay stranded, so they need a way out. And the idea was to either have another boat come along and like come to their rescue or to try and find some way of doing it where there was always a way out. And every boat that I've known of will always have a CB radio. They'll always have a way to contact someone if something goes wrong. And it was just the stupidity of the both of them that for however long they were stranded, neither of them thought of it. So that's that's why I put that part in because that was basically the way out. So the Coast Guard managed to get hold of us when Nick's dad sent out an SOS. I can't believe we spent hours stranded on a boat and the whole time there was a radio on there. Up until we got back I really felt like killing the man. I really don't know how someone could be so stupid. The one thing you do before going anywhere that can leave you stranded is to have an exit strategy. Still, glad to be home now. Got to put my feet up and watch match of the day. I don't even know how West Ham got on against Man United. Morning, Mr. Daz. How did you sleep? Not good. I kept waking up cold and can't get the taste of salt water out of my mouth. <laughs> I am sorry again about yesterday. It wasn't intentional. It's fine. All done there. Please, just no more surprises. I don't think my heart can handle it. Don't worry. I will not do anything to stress you out like that again. so the next episode is based around this little girl and the it's the voiceover is my own daughter she absolutely loves the show and she wanted to be a part of it so she kept bugging me to write her in one way or another so that that's going to be the next episode and I, I enjoyed making it. It was hard work actually making it with her, but I'll get into that the next time around. But anyway, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you next time.